Good morning. Happy Monday. All right, so today is about getting healthy. Um, so everything that we're going to do today is about being our healthiest version of ourselves. And one thing that we're hearing a lot about is obviously the corona um, virus, the respiratory issues that it causes, and this lack of oxygen in the body. And that's where the body starts creating this kind of distress. So we're gonna start off with a deep breathing technique. And this is one I recommend that you learn. Um, it is amazing um, for increasing the level of oxygen in your body and decreasing or kind of pushing out um, more of the carbon dioxide. So it's gonna create more movement and flow. Now, as our body has more oxygen in it, it creates um, oxygenation to the blood. It kicks on the parasit uh, parasympathetic nervous system, and the parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest system in the body. So this is going to give you better rest, better overall digestion, um, it's going to decrease your stress levels, and it's so vitally important. This particular type of breathing technique is going to create better patterns in your lungs. So your lungs start pulling in more oxygen, less carbon. And this is called Nirvana breathing. Um, it is a pranayama, and a pranayama is a breathing technique in yoga. And you might have heard it also referred to as pierced lip breathing. So I want you to just start off in a comfortable seated pose. And that might be on a blanket, that might be on some blocks, that might be on a bolster. And just close your eyes for a moment. And kind of coming into your day. How do you feel this Monday? And kind of connecting a little to your internal energy. Noticing what the mind is saying about your day. And maybe putting the thoughts of the mind away for a little bit. And really just tapping into how your body feels. And just taking a few normal breaths in your body. Now, so we start this breathing technique off really um, well. I want you to just walk your attention down your body as you breathe. So we're going to start kind of paying attention to the top of your head and going all the way down to your feet. But as you do this, Instead of just noticing how your head feels, you know, thank your head. Thank your eyes for seeing. Thank your nose for smelling. Thank your mouth for being able to chew. Thank the backs of the ears. The ears for hearing. The neck for holding up your head. Thank your collarbone, your shoulders, for mobility and action and movement. Thank your arms, your elbows for bending, your wrists, your hands, your fingers. Thank your chest. Thank your lungs. Your heart, all the organs in your body. Thank your spine for holding you up. Thank your hips for allowing you to sit. Thank your legs for helping you walk and stand. Thank your knees for their mobility and flexibility. Thank your shins and your calves. Thank your ankles. Thank 
and your feet and your toes. And your whole body for the participation it's about to give you. And I know sometimes this seems a little silly, but this gratitude to the body is like thanking the people around us and letting the people in our life know that they're important and that they matter. And just think, when somebody gives you a compliment and says, wow, you really made a difference in my life. You've impacted me in such a way that made my life a little happier. Just think of how that makes you feel. You know, when somebody gives you a compliment, that was the best meal I've ever had. You're an amazing cook. You know, or any compliment that you hear, kind of recognizing how that makes you feel and knowing that your body believe it or not, needs that same level of appreciation every day. And you see, this took literally one minute to just appreciate your body for everything that it, it gives you. And we forget that because we kind of take it for granted. So not taking your body for granted. Giving your body that thanks your immune system, the thanks for fighting off whatever has come in its path. You know, and if we do that every day, our body actually works stronger for us. So we're going to start this nirvana breathing. And nirvana in Sanskrit means blowing out. So when we're doing this, you can even think, um, what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to detoxify my system and my life with? So maybe on those exhales, and the exhales are slow. We're gonna go through this together because it's really important how you do this. Um, we wanna make sure not to overtax the heart. And so the breathing is actually in the belly. Um, so we're gonna kind of inhale into the belly. The inhale is gonna be through the nose. Now, instead of holding the breath, so as I inhale, breathe in from my nose, and I don't want you to think about holding the breath, I want you to think of as, let's say you're just riding up in kind of like a roller coaster, and it's going up nice and slow, and then there's that just tiny little pause at the top before the coaster goes down the hill. So instead of actually holding I just want you to think of this really nice two to three second pause. If it feels the hold is at all a strain, that's a hold. So I want you to think of not a strain, but just this little crescendo at the top, right before the, the traveling down happens. Now the inhale is going to be shorter than the exhale. The exhale is twice the length of the inhale. So as I inhale, I'm going to inhale through my nose, do that little crescendo at the top, and as I exhale, I'm going to exhale slowly through the mouth, and I'm going to make this little... Now I want you to think of if you had a straw right between your lips, and if you have that straw, you're kind of... And you might even be able to hear them, that pursed lip exhale. And you want the exhale to be twice as long as the inhale. Now even at the exhale, we have that little crescendo right before we enter back into the inhale. So it should be this really flowing movement. Nothing should be forced, but the exhale is longer. That exhale longer keeps the oxygen in our body and really helps your body harness all the carbon dioxide so it can push it effectively out. So we're holding on to a little bit more oxygen. We're getting our body used to holding on to more oxygen. If you do this on a regular basis, your body will actually get used to drawing in more oxygen, you know, and holding on to that oxygen and pushing out more effectively its carbon dioxide. So this can be a really effective breathing.
breathing. It also is very relaxing breathing. So as you do this, again, it's going to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, that reduces your cortisol level, reduces your stress levels, increases your sleep, your digestion. It just has so many benefits. And this is something that for the people in your life, your children, um, older, you know, if you have older parents, you can teach this breathing technique to anyone. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's something that anybody can do. Now I just want you to close your eyes. And again, we're going to sit comfortably. And I just want you to take a few breaths in through your nose, out through your nose. Now we're going to start this. We're going to breathe in through the nose. So we're going to do a count of three, and then we're going to keep going up a little bit. So breathing in through your nose, I want you to go one, two, three. Feel that little crescendo. And now pierce the lips and exhale. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Feel that little crest. Let's go back into the inhale. So it's one, two, three little crest at the top. That exhale is one, two, through the purse lips, three, four, five, six. Little build up. Let's inhale for one, two, three. Not a force. Remember that little crescendo. Exhale through the purse lips, one, two, three, four, Let's inhale for one, two, three. Little pause at the top. Exhale through the purse lips. One, two, three, four, five, six. Little pause at the bottom. Inhale. Let's go for four. So one, two, three, four. Minor pause, exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Little pause, inhale for one, two, three, four. Pausing, exhale through purse lips, one, two, and maybe think about what I'm pushing out at this point. Seven, eight. Pause, inhale. One, two, three, four. Little pause at the top. Exhale for one, two, three. Making it a smooth exhale, not a forced movement. Seven and eight. And inhale for one, two, three, four. Little pause, lifting, and exhale for one, two, three. Maybe thinking about what in our life we want to press out, what we want to blow out. And eight, little pause. Let's go to that inhale for one, two. Crescendo at the top, exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do three more rounds on your own.
back, inhales through the belly. space between the eyebrows and just start to recognize and notice how your body feels at this point. Notice if you feel any changes as you allow your breathing to get back to that inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. And I really am going to encourage you and I'd love you to post or share um, making this a 30-day practice. Um, see if you can dedicate five minutes a day. Five minutes is not a long time. You can set a timer. Um, it's really only a few rounds of this, but start to notice if you feel so much better that you maybe want to do it multiple times throughout the day. If you can eventually get up to three times five minutes a day, you're going to notice that you have a lot more energy, that you have a lot more vitality. Oops, something hit the window. Um, that you're gonna feel just so much better. All right, so let's stretch out the legs. I know you've been in a cross-leg position for a little bit, so just start to move the legs out a little bit. Let's kind of massage into the knees. I want you to take your hands and slide the fingers all the way down the legs. And do that one more time. Now grab them onto the right foot and just massage out the ankle a little bit. Take your fingers behind the backs of the ankle and massaging in. And then see if you can just give your foot a little bit of love in massaging out the toes. And then doing the same on the other side, drawing that left leg in, massaging into the backs, and take your fingers and kind of pushing into the backs of the ankles. So I did a yin class yesterday, and I kind of explained that it's really important to get into the joints of the, the body. The joints are the acupuncture points, or, you know, um, pretty important acupuncture points in the body where we start to open things up a little bit. If we create a little bit too much um, stagnant energy here, it causes a lot of pain in our joints. Um, and it doesn't create this really good flow in the body. So allowing yourself to have this kind of flow by massaging into these areas. So now I want you to take your hands behind the back of the right knee. And just taking a moment, massaging into the knee, and getting to both sides, and then doing the same on the left. And just taking the fingers behind the backs of the knees, massaging into the top of the knee. And then working yourself up, doing the same thing. You can take your fingers in, working into the hips, or you can work the thumbs into your hips too, and take your fingers to the insides. Whatever is easier for you, kind of working into both hips. And then taking your hand and bring your left hand to your right wrist and massaging out your right wrist. Maybe going up the fingers. And then doing the same with the right hand on the left wrist. And massaging up the fingers, getting into the thumb and then taking the left hand and massaging out the elbow. And then the right hand goes to the left elbow. We don't think about really massaging into these areas that much. So you're going to take your fingers right into this line. And we're going to kind of, this is a, a 
a lymph area. So a lot of times our lymph fluid can get kind of trapped in this area. This is right where your arm and your torso, if you were going to sew a doll, kind of where that seam would be. So you're getting all under the arm and even around the back. So the whole section of where you would sew and kind of working in to that area, just giving some good movement. And do the same on the other side. And again, the left arm where it would be sewn into the torso. And just massaging in to that area. All right, so come into a seated pose, right into our eye movements. So again, I'm trying to open up the whole body. So we have energy flowing throughout the whole body. There's not going to be an area that you're not going to feel a little energized when you're done with this class. Um, even your eyes, and your eyes are really important. So if you have glasses, just put those to the side for the moment. These are called Nectar of the Ayaman, which are just eye movements, and they actually will um, help strengthen your eyes if you continue doing this. So I want you to keep your chin so your chin stays parallel over the mat. I'm not going to move my head. I'm going to look up and if I was looking up and let's say there's a clock, I'm looking at 12 o'clock and I'm going to go right down to 6. Now see if you can keep your eyes along that line. And I want to try to go in this straight vertical line. If I'm not able to, if the eyes wander a little bit, that's okay. Go as fast as you can. 3, 2, 1. Coming back to the center, close your eyes, blink a few times. Now I'm going to gaze over at where 3 o'clock would be, a little horizontal line, and then go to 9. And just keep going side to side, pulling your belly in. Try to notice if your back is leaning. And just try to keep your eyes up at that straight horizontal line and notice if there's any lag. One side might be a little bit, you know, a little sleepy. I mean, back to the center, close your eyes, blink a few times. We're going to gaze up at 12 o'clock. Let's go over to 3, 6, 9, and 12. So just bounce the eyes around these four points. And then if that's comfortable, see if you can waft the eyes to each number on the clock. And go as fast or as slow as you need to. And try to make the circumference as broad as you can. And then coming back to the center, close your eyes, blink a few times. When you gaze up at that 12 o'clock, we'll go to 9, 6, 3, 12. So we're going to go the opposite direction, counterclockwise. And try to hit those numbers first. And then I'll see if you can go around the clock. And notice if there's any number that the eyes are kind of skipping over. And again, I'm just recognizing something. I'm not worrying about it. It's just kind of an observation. What are the eyes doing today? So when I do this tomorrow, I have an idea of how they're improving. When you come back to the center, close your eyes, blink a few times. I'm just going to close the eyes and I want you to kind of move the eyeballs inside the eyes as they're closed. That might be up down, side to side, around in the circles, going the other direction. Nice. All right, if you have glasses, you can put those back on. We're going to come on to our hands and knees. If you need a blanket for your knees, you can use that. We're just going to open up into a few cat cows and also stretch out into your wrists. So if you haven't done anything all weekend, your wrists might be a little strained. So I want you to go Open up the fingers as wide as you can and put a little bend in your elbows like you're doing little baby push-ups. Now pull your elbows towards your knees. And as you come back, see so you can push a little bit more into the thumb. So pressing down and then those elbows come forward, down and forward. And just do a few of these. Now that thumb might be a little uncomfortable. And start to roll out some space around the wrist. And notice if how that feels changes. 
and then walk your fingers out a little bit, moving side to side. Again, maybe taking the shoulders so the shoulders are leaning a little bit more towards the thumbs. And then bringing the arms as far over as you can, and you can even bend the elbows a little. Try to keep the wrists down. When you're ready, coming back into the center, rounding your back, pressing up, and turn the eyes at the elbows so they're facing in towards each other. Now, if you can, drop the chest down a little bit and keep the arms straight. And kind of let the shoulder blades come together in the back. So we're squeezing the shoulder blades together. And then pressing up through the shoulders, open the shoulder blades. And then draw their shoulder blades a little closer together. I'm going to move the hands a little closer. That's going to squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit more. So as I press up, I'm going to open the shoulders a little bit more. So pressing the shoulders out to the side. And then just allow the shoulder blades to kind of collapse into each other. And you can get this a little bit more by pulling your tailbone slightly towards your shoulders and your shoulders a little back, but keep your chest reaching forward. So I don't want to feel this in the back of the neck. Round the shoulders, pressing up through the arms and hug the eyes and the elbows in towards one another. And then as you drop down, again, don't make this about the neck. Pull the shoulders towards the bottom, and then pull the chest forward a little bit. And last one, rounding up. Now I'm going to take my arms really wide. So if you're on a mat, there, it's going to look like your hands are out wider than your mat. I'm facing you, so it's going to look a little bit different. So my arms are still pretty wide. I'm going to press up through my cat pose. So I want to work into the shoulders here. So keep your chest between your wrists. Now move your shoulders over towards the right side, keeping your arms straight. Kind of drop and hollow out your chest and your back a little and kind of glide over towards the left. Now press up through the left shoulder and come all the way back around. It's a little like making um, an oval kind of a, a circle with the shoulders. And I want you to keep just moving, keeping the chest through. You're going to notice my elbows and my arms stay straight. So I'm allowing for this movement in the shoulders, and this should actually feel really good. You can make these kind of animalistic. If you watch any nature shows, you'll notice that this looks very cat-like. You know, the body is moving and opening up, and I'm getting into a lot of the space around the shoulders where it can be constricted and tight. We're going to do one more to this direction, and then I want you to shift your energy over to the right, press up towards the ceiling, keep the chest through the wrists, through the arms, and just go the other direction. And notice how this feels in your side body. And just one more. And you might even hear a lot of little popping or cracking or movements, and that's okay. We're going to come into um, a cat cows for the back, but I want you to start to think about we have 24 vertebra in our back. So my lower back is five, my mid back is actually affixed to my rib cage. So it is 12. And then the cervical spine has seven. So we have a lot going on there, but we're kind of moving our body in three units. A lot of times we do this, 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 and we're not trying to hit each vertebra. So when you're doing this, I want you to come in, wrists and shoulders aligned, puff up your back. So come into your cat pose. Now think about lengthening the arms. If your arms were in an elevator, this is the 13th floor. So the 13th floor is the one you need the key for sometimes. So think about putting your key in that elevator and you think it's at the top and it's not at the top. It can go a little higher. And you'll notice I can go a little higher. So I'm gonna push it a little higher and I'm gonna pull my head down towards my thumbs. Now pull your hips towards your arms and hug the eyes of the elbows in towards one another and press to the tops of the toes. Now curl the toes under, 
drop the chest down, and think about pulling your shoulders towards your bottom. Keep your gaze on your mat. So a lot of times we make this, we kind of over crane the neck and it's compressing to the neck, it doesn't feel good. So all of this should feel good. Curl your toes and kind of work your heels towards your bottom and work your bottom towards your shoulders and pull all those three areas in towards one another. Now pull your chest slightly forward and notice that you have a little bit more room in your back to work into this. So as you're here, I want you to tailbone round. So I'm going to kind of tuck the tailbone under and round it up and go slow. See if you can feel each vertebra on your lift. Draw your belly in, pressing through the arms, and again, put that key in the elevator and press up to the 13th floor. Press the arms up as high as you can, lifting up a little bit more, pressing your arm bones towards your thighs. Thighs are working towards the arm bones. Hug the belly button in. Point the crown of the head down. Relax the neck a little bit. So on your descent, think about dropping back a little bit and start to curl the tailbone. Drop the shoulders, work down through the ribs until it hits the tailbone last. Push the heels towards the bottom and even move your heels and your bottom towards each other a little bit so you can lean back into this a little. Now, keeping that energy drawn in and kind of opening up the bottom a little bit. So let your hips hinge a little. Draw your arms so your arms are actually pulling towards your thighs and your shoulders are pulling towards your bottom. Pull your heart forward and keep opening the heart and keep extending the heart forward as you're pulling the heels and the bottom towards each other. And then pressing through, tucking the tailbone, articulating the spine, feeling each vertebra as it extends up. And again, when you think you can't go any further, kind of picturing, okay, that key goes into the elevator and, ooh, I can go up one more floor. Relax the neck. Relax your jaw. Let your jaw hang a little heavy. Press to the arms, and this time uncurl the toes. Press to the tops of the toes and see if you can lift up just a little bit higher. Now I'm going to pull back so the heels and the bottom come towards each other. I want you to bend the elbows and pull your elbows towards your knee and glide your chest forward, pressing up. And start to move your back in a way that feels really good. And just moving into the shoulders, feeling all the sticky parts of your body kind of unstick. And keep your neck in kind of a neutral position so it's feeling good. If it's feeling compressed, we're compressing. So on this next one, I want you to drop the chest down just like we started pull back, keep your arms straight. Now ripple forward. Make these first few really slow. Drop the chest, pull back, gazing forward, and then articulating the spine, trying to hit each and every vertebra on your way up. And then you might be able to speed this up. Maybe on these last two, even rising to the fingertips. And see if you can keep it on the fingertips, keeping the arms active, pressing the shoulder blades out. And then just sitting back into your child's pose, I want you to walk your fingers forward. If your fingertips are not up, extend your fingertips up. So kind of tent your fingers. Lift your ribs and walk your ribs forward towards the front of your knees a little bit. Pull your heels towards your bottom. Okay, if it doesn't touch. Walk your hands over to the right side. Pull your rib cage to the left. Now plant your right hand down. Left hand just rests right on top of that right hand. And see if you can start to turn your body a little over to the right side. Pressing that left shoulder down just a little bit more. Coming back to the center, walk your hands in and then bring 
bring your hands over towards the left side. Remember, we're going to tend the fingers first and see if you can walk the right fingers forward a little bit more. Pull your ribs to the right side. Plant your left hand down. Right hand comes right on top of it. And then see if you start to turn your body a little to the left, kind of pressing that right shoulder down. So coming back into the center, rolling yourself up, finding your tabletop. Now, if your knees are bothering you, again, using a blanket for your knees, we're going to be here for just a little bit longer. I want you to take your right hand down, and instead of your right hand being all the way over towards the right side, move it right towards the center, and then turn your elbow so it's facing over towards the right side, the eye of the elbow. This is going to put less strain on the elbow. I'm going to take and extend the right arm up and think about the right fingers just coming gently, touching the back of your right ear. Now bring your right elbow down and on your exhale, see if you can twist a little deeper. Inhale down, exhale twist. Inhale down, exhale twist. Reaching that arm up. I'm going to bring it through, but I'm not going to connect. So bend your left elbow. Right shoulder isn't going to come down. And see, come up on the inhale this time. So we'll exhale down. Inhale. So just allowing for our breath to change here a little bit. Noticing if you're feeling it in any different places. Last one. And before we come to the other side, we're going to place that right hand underneath the heart. Eye of the elbow faces towards the left. And I'm going to take that left arm up, take it behind the back of the ear, and just bring that left elbow down towards the right thumb. Come up on the exhale. So inhale down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale, and reach and extend the arm up on the inhale, exhale, come down. Inhale, flow back, so yes, we change the breath, exhale, inhale, reaching up, exhale, last one, inhale, and exhale, take the hands down and just move the hands out a little bit. So turn the fingers so they're going to face all the different directions. Round and puff up your back a little bit, draw your belly in. If you can, face your wrists so they're facing forward and just push away from your hands. Try to keep your wrists down. So pushing away from your hands. The wrists are going to come up a little bit, that's okay, but just try to keep pressing the wrists down, lengthening the space between the arms, trying to keep the fingers down, and then gently pull the wrists back. Notice you're going to feel this all the way down through the side body. Inhale, coming back to the center. Woo, taking those fingers around, coming back in. Let's come into kneeling pose. Take your hands, grab onto your wrists, move them a little forward and back. All right, so we're going to work into the shoulder. We're going to come all the way through. If you have shoulder issues and you need to build up with a blanket, you can. We're going to start again, and I'm going to show you on this side. We're going to bring that right arm up. So I'm going to keep the left hand underneath the heart. Knees are a little bit wider than hip distance apart. Think about bringing that right arm up. And then exhale, bring the right shoulder down, and I'm going to press to the outside of the shoulder. Now, as you do this, you have a really nice opportunity to maybe even move the shoulder a little towards the left side. Take the left hand and pull on the wrist. Kind of pull on the forearm and just move that arm a little bit. Don't pull so much that you're hurting the shoulder. So just be aware of where my stopping point is, where something feels good, and where I'm going a little too far. And so maybe staying here, Offer a little bit of a twist. 
See if you can press the right shoulder down a little bit and keep gazing up. If you're able, bring that left arm up towards the ceiling and take a fist and roll out the wrist in both directions. And then take that hand behind the back for a moment. See how that feels on the shoulder. Maybe grab onto the inside of the thigh. And your next inhalation, reach your arm up and I want you to bring your left fingers right in front of you and see if you can start walking them forward. And then maybe walking them over towards the right side. And walk them as far over as you can, pressing into the outside of the right hand. Now, you can deepen this by taking your left toes off the mat, over to wherever you are, keep the toes ground, and see if you can give a little push, a little deeper into that shoulder. If you start to feel any pain in the neck, the shoulder, I want you to stop. Bend this left elbow as much as you need to. And just allow for this little deepening twist. You might even lean over a little bit more, maybe peeling that left arm back. When you're ready, bringing the knee down, bringing it all in. So coming back into the center. Rounding the back a little bit, pressing up. We do that same thing to the other side. So this time, I'm going to keep that right hand underneath. And as I do this, that left arm is going to come up. And I'm going to bring the left arm under and take it down towards the shoulder. Now, see how this feels for the head. You can use the right hand, grab onto the wrist, the forearm, and just give it a little tug. If you want, you can move your shoulder a little bit more towards the left side and kind of pull your right body over towards the right, almost like you're paying a little tug of war with your own self. Now, as you're here, reach your arm up. Give yourself a little twist. So that hand might gently come behind the back. I'm not binding it, so I'm not torquing the shoulder. I'm not putting pressure on the right shoulder. I'm just allowing for the chest to open a little bit more. You might feel a little bit more turn in the rib cage. Now, as you extend that right arm up, see if you can bring the right fingers right in front of your face, walking the hand forward. If that feels okay for the shoulder, see if you can walk it a little over towards the left side of the mat. Maybe pressing the right toes to the earth. See if you can press a little bit more energy into that left shoulder. You're going to keep drawing the navel in, bend the elbow as much as you need to, and then open the chest a little bit more up towards the ceiling. And you're going to feel maybe some constriction in your breathing. If your breathing cuts off completely, you're probably in a little too deep. Come out of the pose a little. When you're ready, you're going to bring that right knee down. Right hand comes back, and then just gently push yourself back up. Take your head down for a moment. Let your head hang heavy. Move your head a little side to side. And then I'm going to come onto my back. So I'm going to bring myself over onto my back. If you need a blanket underneath your head, you can use that. I always like that. So that's a nice option for me. Um, we're not going to come into bridge. We're going to come in and rotate and open the hips. So again, we talked about opening the joints. And the shoulders, very open. Remember your spine articulating, getting oxygen moving and through that. Keep a nice steady pattern to your breathing. So inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Let's grab onto the right knee. And I just want you to take a moment, pull the right knee in by your side. Now try to point your right knee towards your chest. So it's going to be right in line with your right collarbone. Push your left hip down. Now if you can, just lift your right leg up and notice where the knee is. It might be right over the chest, it might be kind of over to the side. See if you can move it back a little bit over and you can grab onto the back of the leg. You don't have to grab onto the calf or the foot. If you can, pull the knee straight down. And sometimes it takes a little bit of maneuvering. As you're doing this, try to push the left hip down. 
So you're going to grab on either to the back of the thigh, or if you have the foot, I want you to grab onto the ankle and roll out the foot, going both directions. Now move it side to side, kind of like a rudder. Flex the foot, and then wiggle the toes, and see if each toe wiggles. And if they're not wiggling, remember, most of your toes have three joints. You know, they have three hinges. So a lot of times we're only moving two. Sometimes not even that, we're moving one. So trying to get all the toes working, all the joints working. So squeeze your toes together, curling, and then flex. Squeeze, flex, squeeze, flex one more. Squeeze, flex, point the toes, keep the toes pointed. And so if you can't extend the point, pull the knee down. Point the toes up. So the knee and the toes are going in the opposite direction. And just stay here for a breath. Pushing into the lower back. You're going to feel this in the arch. If you're feeling a lot of tension in the arch and you can reach your hands up, I want you to massage right behind the back of that arch. But keep the toes pointed. So it's kind of like sometimes when you have a knot in your body, and you can access the knot and stretch it out a little bit. Now relax your feet, bring that knee in. We're gonna grab onto the knee and I'm gonna open the hip a little. And so start rotating the hip. And you can use your hand if you have limited mobility. If you're able, I want you to think about your knee is going around a circle. So you have this big circle and try to paint this big circle. Now, if you have a pen on your foot, see if you can bring that leg out a little bit further. We're going to do this as fast as we can. So we've got about five, and four, and three, and two, and one. And we're going to go the other direction, same thing. So we're going to find five, and four, and three, and two, and one, throw your knee in, extend the leg, and just extend that up and down a few times. And then we're going to take it to the other side. Left knee comes in, right leg extends down, and I'm going to bring and extend that left leg up. So we're going to pull this leg in and reach the foot a little forward and back. And again, you're going to grab onto the back of the leg, kind of pulling it in, pressing the right hip down. And just pulling that in as much as you can. Shoulder blades are pressing back. And if you can, grab onto the shin and see where the knee is in relationship to this. You're going to push the right hip down. And I'm going to move the ankle on the left leg. I'm going the other direction. And then point the toes, flex the foot, point the toes, flex the foot. And just do this a few times. And then see, can you wiggle the toes? Now as you're doing this, pull the knee down, point the toes, and press into the right hip. Keep extending the toes up. And again, if you're feeling that little cramp at the bottom of the foot, kind of massage it into the bottom of the foot. And we're going to move that knee. So I'm going to start to take it around in a little bit of a circle. And then maybe go in the other direction. And now see, can you bring that knee in big circles? We're going to do this a little bit more. Start extending the leg out a little bit. And getting that leg really open, noticing how the hip feels. And then see if you can go the other direction. And when you're ready, just grabbing onto both knees, rolling the little side to side as you do this. Right in front of you. Hi. All right. Yes, I know. Come on. We're going to come on to, come on baby, sit to the side, side, oh, come on, come on. 
Let's come into bridge pose. You're gonna take the towel. <laughs> We're planking away from you. And press your feet into the earth. Now, you want your lower back pressing down the whole way. Hi, I know, I know, I love you too. But you're gonna have to stop. Sit, sit, sit down, sit down. So we're gonna lift the tailbone up, press into the backs of the shoulders as you're doing this. And think about bringing your shoulder blades in a little bit closer. So I'm gonna to start to walk the shoulders in just a little bit more. If you can, take your hands underneath your back. And kind of squeeze your shoulder blades together as much as you can. Now pressing through the feet, lift your heart and make sure your neck is away. So you want some space between your chin and your chest. This is an opportunity for us to kind of open the back of the neck, but not if my chin is pressing in. So think about lengthening. This is where I want you to think more than this lift. How can I get my head pulled back? So take your hands and just grab onto the back of the neck just a little bit and tilt your chin slightly up. Now this is maybe your stopping point. But you want space in the body. I don't want to compress to come into a pose. So I might bring the shoulders a little bit more and then move the head back a little bit further. So you have this really nice long range of movement. Press into your big toes. Think about lifting your arches and lift your hips a little bit more. Squeeze your thighs, firming up the legs. So the legs are really strong as you're doing this. Pressing the shoulders back and keep lifting the heart. And we're going to stay here for about five breaths. And remember this breath, start in through the nose and out through the nose. And breathing in and out as you do this. When you're ready, on your exhale, slowly starting to release. Bring the lower back down. Pressing into the lower back, grabbing onto the knees, pulling the knees into the ribs. So planting the left leg down. We're going to take the right ankle over the left knee, and I want you to push that out, flex the foot. Again, if you need anything underneath the head, you can use that. Press the knee away from you as much as you can. We're not going to grab onto the back of the leg just yet. I want you to think about pressing the right foot and allow the right foot to kind of come over towards the left side. Now, as you're here, think about working the hip down a little bit, using the left hand, pushing this leg slightly out. Now, your toes might be down. They might not, but try to keep the foot flexed if you can, pushing the leg slightly away. Stay here for a few breaths, allowing for this to work the outside of the IT. So you're going to feel a lot of energy going down the outside of that leg as you do this. It's connecting to the hip again. We're releasing that line of energy where stagnation happens. So not forcing this, making sure that you can breathe comfortably. And your next inhalation, start to bring the foot back up and walk the left foot in line with the left leg. Make sure the lower back is down. Now, if you're able, you can grab onto the back of that leg. You can take the hands to the front of the shin and just allow yourself to kind of melt into this pose. See what the body has to offer. Maybe close your eyes, checking in maybe where you feel this. And I'm going to bring the left leg down, and I'm going to come into a little bit of a twist, and I just want you to bring the knees over towards the side. As you're here, walk the left foot away, and see if that left leg can come down a little bit further. So I'm giving this twist for the left hip. Now, as you're here, see if you can lift your ribs up a little bit, and gaze over towards the left side. Arms might come out. You might even take that right arm and just drape it across over to the left side. And 
When you're ready, bring the inner, extend the arms back out and walk the foot back in. And then undo the right leg. We're going to do the same on the left. So left ankle crosses. All I'm going to do is press the knee away. If this is enough, I'm going to stay here. If you can, think about pressing the left heel down. And you're going to take that left heel over towards the right side. And pushing the knee away. And just feeling this on the outside of the IT. If the foot isn't down, it's okay. Breathe in any uncomfortable spaces. We're going to stay here for two more breaths. And if you're not feeling much, you can keep pushing that leg away, but make sure the toes are down. On your next inhale, slowly start to bring that leg back up. And then see if you can grab onto the back of the right leg, pulling that leg in. You might bend the knee. You might take the hands around to the top of the shin, but keeping the left foot engaged. So I'm keeping this foot flexed, so I'm protecting the left knee. Relax the foot on the right, and just see if you can draw the leg in a little closer towards your body. And allow for your body to relax here a little bit. See where you might be holding tension, where you might be tightening a little bit more. When you're ready, this right foot is going to come down. And then I'm just going to let the legs kind of migrate over to the left side. Now, see if you can walk the right toes over a little bit. And this right leg might come down closer towards the mat. You're going to feel the tension on the inside of the right hip. Arms can be anywhere that you want, but if you can offer a little bit of a twist, twist the ribs, and then bring and extend the arm over. You might take that left arm and just drape it across the body and give yourself a little bit more of a twist. Try to relax the right hip as much as you can. back to the center, just grabbing onto the knees, pulling your knees into your ribs. We're going to roll a few times up and down on our spine. Hollow out the spine a little bit and come up into a seated pose. We're going to engage the core, so we're going to come into our boat pose. I want you to sit up as tall as you can, plant the heels into the earth. Lift the heart, lift the chest, pull the elbows down. Now lean back a little bit. Now as you lean back, engage the core. If you're engaging the core, you don't really need to come into anything more than this. You can even use a little bit of support, but not a lot of support. If you can bring the arms forward, pull the shoulders back. If you want a little bit more, keep the boat, lift the legs up, but try to keep lifting the chest and the shins, or the thighs, in towards each other, keeping the shins and the calves elevated. So you can see it's almost like I'm pulling the legs back, keeping everything lifted, and really hugging into the low abdomen. Staying here for three, two. When heels are going to come down, relax the toes. Move your body a little forward and back. When you do one more like that, lifting up, leaning back, drawing the belly in. Press the heels to the earth, reach the arms forward. Shoulder blades pull back, belly sucks in. Now, as you're here, lift the torso as much as you can and see if you can start lifting the legs. Now, as the legs are lifting, pull the ribs towards the thighs and keep extending the chest upward. So I'm not looking up. That's never putting pressure on the back of the neck, but I'm pulling the knees in as closely as I can. Stay here for three, two, and one. Bring the heels down, press the toes down, Roll into it a little bit. All right, taking those feet around, I'm going to remove this. We're going to come into our downward facing dog. 
So hands are down, curl your toes, glide your tailbone back, and then just lift the legs, sliding into your downward facing, straighten out the legs a little bit, and just scissor them out. Bend your right knee and try to push your left heel down as much as you can. When you're ready, bend your left knee and try to push your right heel down as much as you can. And it's okay if it doesn't touch. And when you're ready, coming up onto the toes, walking yourself forward and letting your head rest down and just swaying a little side to side. Take your hands down by your elbows if you need to, elbows towards knees. So when I'm in this, I'm going to extend down and I'm going to let the head rest down. Now I know we've done 99% of our practice today seated, but again, it doesn't mean that I need a hard standing practice to allow for the body to release everything it needs to. So I want you to finish off here. And I want you to try to extend the legs. Now, as you're here, let the jaw go. So as I let the jaw go, I'm going to kind of move the jaw a little bit. And circle the jaw both directions. And just notice how much tension we keep in our jaws. When you're ready, hands to our shins, gaze forward, halfway lift. Exhale, bend and bow. On your inhale, draw your belly in. And exhale, and start to bring the bottom down, super slow. If you can find a malasana, find a malasana. Those heels might lift. If you do not have a yogi squat, that's okay. We're coming down into shavasana. So, and even though you are at home, I know that sometimes the Shavasana is something like I skip through, but maybe giving yourself a little bit of time in your Shavasana. And allow the body to move, and maybe take a moment, move out any little spaces that you felt that we didn't connect to today. And allow your bottom to come down. Allow your legs to come down. And I want you to, as slowly as you can, roll down the vertebrae at a time. Try to connect the lower back. And allow the body to relax. Allow the shoulders to relax. Feel all the areas of your body that were oxygenated today. And then sometimes I need to open everything up first. And depending on what your weekend was like, you know, sometimes I need just a practice that allows for me to open up all the little spaces so I can start putting more stress on the muscles, on the joints. And so I invite you to stay here as long as you can. And just maybe walking your attention through your body. Revisiting the areas that you started with, with praise, and noticing what feels different. What maybe feels a little more open.
very often we are the victims of our life because we feel like everything is being done to us and we aren't the victims. Very often the things that are happening in my life are a result of what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, and subconsciously even what I feel sometimes I deserve. So if we start looking more internally, start drawing our awareness to our thoughts, we can start to see a pattern of what is in my life is in direct correlation to what I'm putting out into the world. And so anytime things are not going well, anytime you're worried or stressed, the best place to go to is thanks. Praise and thanks for what you have, where you are, what is moving, what feels good. Staying in those areas and thoughts of appreciation for as long as you can and notice that they build, they grow. And all of a sudden, you have so many things you can thank and appreciate that you just don't have time in a day to do it. So making today about praise, blowing out what does not work for us and finding that place of nirvana, of only keeping what we want to give thanks to. And so I want to thank you so much for a beautiful morning practice. And I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. Namaste.